Eccentric muscle contractions are often considered to be the gold standard for treatment of tendon pain. An eccentric muscle contraction, such as a heel lower for the Achilles tendon, is a muscle contraction where the muscle is actually lengthening as it's contracting. While there's many theories on how eccentric exercises can help with tendinopathy, the mechanism isn't well understood. In this episode, we'll discuss how eccentric exercises can help with tendinopathy. A study by Jeffrey Verrill, published in the Scandinavian Journal of Medicine and Science and Sports, looked at how physical science principles apply to Achilles tendinopathy and eccentric exercises. Specifically, they looked at Hooke's Law, which is force equals stiffness times cross-sectional area times displacement divided by original length. So to increase the tendon's ability to tolerate force, we can either increase the stiffness of the tendon increase the cross-sectional area, or we can increase the displacement of the tendon, which is the change in length of the tendon. We're obviously not able to change the original length of the tendon, and that's because it's fixed between two areas. So when we're looking at how to actually increase the tendon's ability to tolerate force, we can only change three of those four variables. For the pathological tendon, the way that the tendon will increase its ability to tolerate force in the short term is that it'll increase its uh, cross-sectional area through swelling. What ends up happening in the tendon is that it will increase its proteoglycan production, which will suck fluid into the tendon, separating the collagen fibers, but it will also increase the cross-sectional area of the tendon, so it will be able to absorb more force in the short term. However, in the long term, this can be problematic because it's separated those collagen fibers, so it's not as densely packed. In the continuum theory for tendinopathy, this is known as a reactive tendon. With continued overload, there are other structural changes that we see in the pathologic tendon. One finding that we see is that with that continued accumulation of fluid inside of the tendon, there's disruption and more disorganization of those collagen fibers in the tendon. Another finding that we see is that there's a transition from type 1 collagen fibers, which are more prevalent in healthy tendons, to a type 3 collagen fiber, which is more prevalent in ligaments. And so essentially what is going on is that the tendon is becoming less stiff so that it can tolerate more load through displacement. In other words, the tendon is becoming a less efficient spring because it's not able to absorb as much load through that stiffness in an effort to be able to tolerate more load. These findings suggest that there's three different possible mechanisms behind how eccentric exercise can help with tendinopathy. The first mechanism is that eccentric exercise can decrease the stiffness of the tendon, which will increase the tendon's ability to tolerate more force. And this is by allowing for more displacement within the tendon. The other two mechanisms actually work by decreasing the amount of force that's applied to the injured portion of the tendon. So the second mechanism is that eccentric exercise might alter the mechanical properties of either the muscle or the tendon that are not injured which will help decrease the load that's actually applied to the injured portion of the tendon. And then the third mechanism is that eccentric exercise might alter the gait mechanics, which will help decrease the load that's placed on the injured portion of the tendon. The way eccentric exercise helps tendinopathy can either include one of these mechanisms alone or a combination of these mechanisms. In summary, eccentric exercise helps to improve the tendon's ability to tolerate force by decreasing its stiffness, which will allow for more displacement within the tendon. This can either occur by increasing the tendon's ability to absorb force itself, or by decreasing the amount of load placed on the tendon, either by changing the gait mechanics or improving the resilience of other portions of the tendon and muscle. Thank you for watching this episode on how eccentric exercises help with tendinopathy. I hope that you found this information useful. If you did, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. If you want to see more of my content, go ahead and subscribe to my channel as well. And if you want to be notified of future videos, hit the bell icon as well. I'll see you guys in the next video.